So you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't hate gay people. No. But not. but you do feel like that being gay is is an enemy. It is a spirit of some sort. I believe that. I believe that the enemy has invaded them. I just don't think they were born that way. I can't ever believe that God makes mistakes like that. We have to get to that to that level, that level, of, and, and and understand that this is a spiritual warfare. It's not something that we fight here on the on the earth. We're fighting in the spirit realm. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my life thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well. The church is the root of African-American culture, a safe space during slavery, a refuge during Jim Crow, and the beginnings of the civil rights movement began in churches across the country. For many of us, our memories begin in houses of worship. But what happens to a person when they are taught they are an abomination? How can someone value their life if they are told their existence is a sin? The black church, which was once seen as a space of liberation, is now being viewed by many in the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community as a space of oppression. Many LGBT people in the church are asking themselves, why must we choose between faith and living an authentic life? For me, it's kind of like it was, it was innate, it was born in me that I was supposed to serve God. And not only was I taught that from a long, from an early age, my mother like exhibited that in my life. We were at church every time the doors open, Bible study, Sunday school, Sunday night service, whatever. Whenever the doors were open, we were there. And she taught us to serve God, and that needs to be the forefront, the thing that's the foremost thing in our life. And if you serve God, everything else will fall into place. And I've always lived my life that way. Hold this for a second, baby. Sure. Like, hold this. It hurts when knowing that we're getting married and it's going to be mostly friends there and not family. As Tanika's fiance, I'm hurting more for her because her family on both sides are not in agreement. So is that how your vows want to sound? My vows are awesome. Oh. Oh. Everybody just made them cry. What? Y'all met at church. Yes, in the offering line, by the way. Yeah. Well, I noticed her before then, so <laughs> she she was a new face. And I said, who is that? I mean, our church is big, but you know when there's a new person. So I was like, who's that woman over there? Dan she was praise dancing. That's her, that's her gift. So she was dancing, you know, at church. And I said, who's that? And I said, when it's time for offering, we have like an area where we go out and you can use your you know, debit card to pay your tithes. So I went out, I was paying my tithes, and I saw her. And I walked up to her and said, you did an amazing job during praise and worship. You were, you were awesome. And she said, well, thank you. And then I asked her her name, she told me. And then I turned to walk away and she grabbed my hand and says, so what's my name? I said, well, <laughs> that was four words. And she was like, neat. I was like, you, you better not forget. Yeah, so she said, so at that point, I was like really intrigued, like this woman. So we met at church paying our time. And she came to me one day and said, Lord said, you're going to be my wife. And I said, okay, you hadn't told me that yet. 
but um <laughs> all right you you know what you want so i think it was a few months after that that she proposed when it came to me wanting to live who live to be who i was and be free in who i was it was very difficult for me because i know my mother and my family are very religious and they believe that homosexuality is a sin and there's no really give and take in that so much so that when i came out my family i mean they for lack of a better term shunned me um i still don't have i used to have a very very close relationship to my uncle and to this day i probably talk to him once a year and that's very very troubling for me only because he raised me he taught me how to read like i to then my closest friend for my entire life and now i don't talk to him at all and it's, it's hurtful because they believe that they're doing the right thing based on what the god that they serve but i don't understand how a god the god that i love and the god that i serve would condone them treating me the way that they do. I feel like we're normal. And I feel like it's liberating to see us living as who we are for people who are afraid to come out of the closet. I find we get messages all the time because we're so open. We get messages all the time from people on Facebook saying, oh, you saved my life, and oh, we didn't know that you could be Christian and gay. We, we didn't lying. know that this existed. God still loves us. We are confirmation of that. You cannot deny the blessing of God and the hand of God on our lives. How much would it mean for you to have your mother and oh, your mother-in-law there? Oh would mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it would mean everything. It would mean that she finally sees me and not the thing she calls the sin. You know what I mean? Like for her to come and participate in my wedding, would would be confirmation that I am doing the right thing. And though I know in my heart that I'm doing the right thing, to not have the woman who created me believe that I'm doing the right thing is very difficult for me. Because I put my mother on a pedestal. She lives there. There's nothing she could do to fall off of that pedestal. And no matter what she says or no matter what she does, she'll always be the perfect woman to me and to ha not have her you know blessing on the most important day of my life is for lack of a better term very difficult and that would change my life if she decided to come but you know, I don't put too much thought I in keep that. telling her <laughs> it's only a couple days away and I don't know I keep having this feeling that she's gonna show up like, I, I don't know. It's, I don't want to get my hopes up about it. I feel bad for a lot of people that are going through, and I say, this is why our youth today that are trying to come out, they can't come out or they committing suicide. Often Found is a homeless shelter that caters to LGBT youth. In the state of Georgia, you can be a youth up to age 25. Then you have the actual housing program. For those who actually qualify to get into the house, you can come. It is a true safe haven. You can be here for up to 90 days, and we help you to really get on track, like literally from zero to 100 real quick. Dustin, Dustin, why isn't your room clean? Austin. Why does your room look like this? And bathroom two supposed to be clean. What is, what is all this? The black kids who are here are the majority of them here because of spiritual violence, spiritual abuse. Yes. Why do you think that the majority of black kids that are here, they're, they're here for abuse from the church? Because growing up in a black household, most black households are very faith-based. You know, it gets to that point where a child can no longer fight the urges or fight who they're going to be, who they want to be, who they aspire to be. And they are stuck between a rock and a hard place. If I stay home, I have to literally 
die inside because I can't be who I am or who I want to be or who I feel I need to be. I can't express myself at all. No one understands me. I can't talk about it. I'm stuck here or I leave and I literally fight to survive.